定有 Doctor Lee、Doctor Clarence Lee 在我们当中啊，我们啊好不好？我们就用啊我们鼓掌来谢谢他，谢谢他抽空时间哦，抽空时间来到我们当中。那么跟我们分享一些啊，关于到这个肾脏移植跟这个器官捐献的这个部分。那么现在呢，我们在开始之前，我们请啊中医弟兄来为我们做一个开始祷告，然后我们就将这个麦啊 pass 给多多嘞。弟兄姐妹，让我们一起来祷告。来，来看。天父，我们为着今天晚上，我们来感恩。第一，天父，我们感谢你，神你带领啊。李长茂医生来到我们当中，来分享这个特别的课题。我觉得，神你在他生命、在他过去的经历跟学习当中，你给予他的恩惠能力。今天在我们当中，与我们一起分享，我们为这件事来向天父来感谢。天父感谢你，因为你也透过教会让我们看到这一方面需要，也让弟兄姐妹有这样的机会去聆听这样的课题。我们为觉得这也是这样的一种的机会，我们先深深感谢。为什么我们今天在这里的分享，我们愿意把整个的时间从头到尾我们交托，愿神您与啊咱们一生同在，与我们每个人同在，与我们生理，我们在我们的心里，我们有担心、有担忧的问题，我们都透过这样一个讲座，我们来对他有更深的了解，愿神及神的带领我们，谢谢天父，我们把这段时间完成向天父交托，仰望祷告奉主耶稣基督名祈求，阿门。Thank you so much. Sir. I I I I'm more comfortable talking in English, sir. So you don't mind? Can okay. All right. So so the the topic that that was、uh, that is planned for tonight is kidney transplantation and organ donation. Organ donation. I will talk for about only half an hour, and then、uh, after that we have some time for discussion. Ah,、uh, discussion. Okay.、Um, So, so my my lecture will be from a Sarawakian perspective. That means the slides I show you is to do with Sarawak, and also maybe also from my personal experience, ah, personal experience. So instead of giving you things from the internet, ah, it's a personal, ah,、uh, Sarawakian experience regarding this topic of kidney transplantation and organ donation. So I I am a medical doctor. I graduated from University of Malaya in nineteen. Eighty-one. One of my younger brothers is、uh, Mr. David Ling's、uh, classmate. So I'm from Serike,、uh, origin from Serike. My father came from China when he was eight years old,、um, and we come from a very very poor family. We stay in a tap house in Serike, you know. So so I I have no problem about telling where I come from, you know. Uh, uh, not like some people they say, oh, they are from somewhere somewhere.、Uh, I'm I'm a medical doctor. I'm a urologist. So my life. For the last forty years, basically, is regarding the urinary tract, the kidneys, and then the bladder, and then the tube from the kidney to the bladder, the called the ureter, and the bladder is here, and the bladder in the male patient is connected to the prostate, the seminal vesicle. This produces the sperm, and then we have the penis in the man, urethra in the female, and we call the testicles, the testicles. Um, and of course, all this must be connected with the nerve, with the spinal cord, with the hormones, with the brain. And of course, all this is under the will of God. So a lot of people think that, oh, I fix your tire for you, but actually, God thinks that you're going to have an accident, you know. So I fix your kidney, but God may not wish you to have a long life. So, so all this thing is in connection together. Uh, today, today I talk. I talk to you about the kidney. Another day I can come to talk to you about the bladder, the prostate,、uh, sex,、uh, fertility, the penis. So there are many topics that are of、uh, public interest in urology. Of course, I'm not so good in talking about this, lah.、Huh? Not so good about this. You, you are the expert in this. How common is kidney failure? There, there's a study done in Johor. It says that it's about 100 per million. So Sarawak, 2.5 million now. So now we we should have about 250 people with kidney failure per year, new cases per year. All right. So we have a lot of patients with kidney failure every year. Why do we have kidney failure? The leading cause is diabetes, 40 percent diabetes. There's a huge group of patients in Malaysia called unknown. Sorry, I can't put that put that in chew. About 30 percent. We don't know why. 
because the patient come and see you, they already have kidney failure. And it doesn't make sense. The kidney is very small already, so we cannot biopsy and find out why. So maybe we think it's due to inflammation, due to infection, sometimes due to obstruction by stones, uh, so many other causes. But the leading cause is diabetes. This is especially so in the Malay Kampong. Sometimes the whole, whole Kampong, about 50% are diabetic. So diabetes is a very important cause. Um, so diabetes, we can talk about it another day, but no, I'm not a diabetic specialist. La. Okay, so now I talk a little bit about kidney transplantation from the Sarawakian point of view. The first kidney transplant in Malaysia is a Sarawakian. This is the recipient. He had a kidney from the brother. They are from Bau, done in 1975, just before I, I entered medical school. So of course not done by me, not done by Dr. Hussein Awang. The late Dr. Hussein Awang, he passed away already. So when I came back to Kuching, I visited him at home. So this is the recipient. He lived, his kidney lived, well, he lived for 31 years after the transplant. So he was not married. He got married, the wife. He got a beautiful daughter who is an air stewardess and married a, 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 a Dutch man. So I went to the house in Bao and I took this photograph. So the kidney was used for 31 years. One day he was bitten by his cat. Then he got a severe infection and he died in general hospital. So this is the story of kidney transplant. It started from Sarawak. Um, I worked in GHKL as a urologist from 19... Uh, I went there as a, as a MO in 1984. From Kapit, I went there. And I worked there as a specialist from 87 until 95. So I was there for this period. Uh, so every year we do about 40 transplants, about one transplant per week. Now. So I did about 100 transplants when I was in GHKL over this period. So many of my, my uh, talk is on these results. Lah. So these are the Sarawakians that were transplanted when I was in GHKL. Not many, but for a year. Not so many, not so many. So these are the patients. When I came back to Kuching to work, these patients come and look for me and talk to me. Oh, you did my transplant long ago. So in those days, the transplants are from, usually from the mother. So the mother gave him a kidney, the mother gave her a kidney. So, so kidney transplant has been around for a long time. And also even in Sarawak. So this is from Dr. Claire Tan. Claire Tan is the head of nephrology in GH, uh, SGH. Yeah? So she gave me the figures. So every year we have, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in Sarawak, we have, every year we have a total about 100, 100 over transplants. Yeah? 100 transplants. Um, most of the transplants in the beginning are from the living related, usually from the mother. From the mother. Sometimes they are from what is called cadaveric. In those days we use the word cadaveric. That means the person died already, and they donate the kidney. But very few, very few cadaveric. 16, 5, maybe once a month. And a big chunk of them, big chunk of them, almost 100, are from overseas. This overseas, at that time, this, during this period, refers to China. They go to China and have kidney, kidney uh, transplant. But now, after the Olympic Games, I think China stopped it. So now they go to Cambodia. They go to Cambodia, but the, the donor, and the surgeon is from China. They go to Cambodia for the kidney transplant. Uh, so this is called overseas transplant. I have, I have an interest in, in children, pediatric surgery. Yeah? So I do a, quite a lot of pediatric transplant. So I come back to Kuching, but I still go back to GHKL to do the pediatric transplant until pre-COVID, not pre-COVID. So we did 61 transplants over a period of uh, seven years, about seven a year. That like, means every month I fly to KL and do a transplant. Uh, this is my good friend, Mulleris Sundrum. So, because I'm, I'm, I'm a flying doctor, I cannot do the whole thing myself. So, I work together with him to do the kidney transplant in, in KL. So, the ages from 6 to 17 years. So, even children can be transplanted. Usually, again, it's from the mother. But it's not, it's not harmless. Huh? We got two deaths of the 61 cases. And I, I make a report of this uh, when, I, we, when we met with the Malaysian Society of Nephrology. So, this is the kidney that we harvested from the mother. This is the operation. In those days, we do open operation. You know, so make a big cut, take out the kidney, and give it to the child. Nowadays, we do it by keyhole surgery. So transplantation, slowly, very slow, about 10 cases per year in Malaysia. Transplantation in children, pediatric, in pediatric in children, only about 10. So what happened to the other people? Some of them, they undergo hemodialysis. Hemodialysis. That means they take the blood and dialyze it. But children are very small. So if you take the blood, the child can, can faint, you know, the child can die. So 
many of the children are dialyzed by PD, peritoneal dialysis. They put the needle into the abdomen and dialyze. So, so this is the pediatric, these are the children who got kidney failure. After, after, after COVID, uh, they got few new surgeons in GHK, so I, I don't usually go back and do anymore, but the numbers are still very low, very small numbers, about 10 per year. But we have an increased number of so-called cadaveric transplant now, cadaveric, that means patients who are already dead, patients who died, and then they donate the kidneys to the, to the, to the kidney failure patient. So number of pediatric transplants, but numbers again very, very small, very, very small, about 10 per year only. How is the transplant surgery? People think that oh, surgery must be very complicated, but actually most of the surgery are very simple. So for a patient who go for kidney transplant, this is the kidney. The kidney must have sub blood supply, right? Like the, like, the, like the electricity, red color. So we have got arterial supply, the blood must come out, right? Venous supply. So we just connect the artery from the kidney, connect it to the human being, which you put on the leg here. Connect it to the iliac artery. And then the vein, connect to the iliac vein. Okay, so it's quite a simple procedure, quite a simple procedure. So these are some of the pictures of the operation that I did when I was, uh, when I was operating in GHK, quite red color when it's projected, uh, quite red color. And then, this is the kidney from the mother, huge kidney from the mother. The child is very small, so the whole half of the abdomen is the kidney. We do this surgery still nowadays in Malaysia by open surgery. We, don't, we still don't do keyhole surgery for the kidney transplantation. And we use magnification, uh, we use a magnification, make sure that the sutures are very well done. Then the, the other thing we connect is to the bladder, uh, to the bladder, so that the urine goes into the bladder. So actually there are only three connections. So the transplantation surgery by itself, the surgery by itself for many conditions is very, very simple. Artery to the artery, vein to the vein. Then there's the ureter, the tube conducting the urine. That goes into the bladder. So surgery by itself as a surgeon is a very simple procedure. This is, the problem is how to find the organs. Where are you going to get the kidney from? So this, this girl, she's, a, she's actually a school girl, she's a tourist. She came to KL in 1992. In I was still full-time GHKL. I came, I came back to Unimas in 1995 only. So this, during when I was in University of Malaya, there's a minibus, you know, the minibus, the famous minibus. So she was knocked down by a minibus, head injury. So we did, we did a test on the brain, the brain is damaged. She cannot breathe unless we put on a ventilator. So the parents came from USA and the parents said, we don't want to bring the body back to US. Please take all the organs you like, take any organ you like. Then after that, they will cremate the body. But at that time, we could only harvest the kidneys. So I harvested both kidneys. I harvested around, by the time I finished about 11 o'clock night time, and then we transplanted it into two recipients. This is the, the schoolboy, 11 years old, and this is the teacher. So this, this is called, uh, last time we called it cadaveric transplant, but cadaveric is not a nice word, you know. So now we call it deceased donor. The, 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 the person is deceased, so if the person is dead, we collect the organs. So that's organ donation. So when, when a person's brain is dead, actually, the spirit will leave the body. So, so the, the body, this body here, this body here is actually a dead body. But the heart is still beating, it's not breathing. But why is the heart beating? Because it's connected to a machine. So this is the idea of brain death. So brain death. So all over the world, we harvest organs from people who are brain dead. But when you go to the ICU, you can still see the heart beating. Okay, because it is maintained by all the drugs and the ventilator. So brain dead patients, they are going to die. Definitely they're going to die. Soon the brain, the brain will be gone and then uh, the, the whole body will be, will be necrotic. So the brain dead patients are the ones who, who we look out for donation of organs. Uh, organs. Uh, most of them are like this, accidents, motorbike accidents, but many of them nowadays are because of intracranial hemorrhage, bleeding in the brain. Bleeding in the brain, why? Because of hypertension, high blood pressure. High blood pressure. So every day, every day on my phone, I will get messages that there's a donor in 
this town, this town, that town, you know. Uh, so, so when there's a brain dead patient, the hospital will ask the family whether they want to donate the organ. And unfortunately, most of the time, they don't want they, to refuse. At first, when I came back in '96, I thought the Sarawakians are very open about this kind of thing, you know. But unfortunately, it is not. It is not. Uh, last time, we used to think the Muslims, the Muslims don't donate. Na? We think that the Muslims don't donate. But now, actually, there's a national fatwa long ago. So the Muslims can donate. The Muslims can donate. All, all the religions allow you to donate, but the cultural belief, the family belief, is another problem. So we have no donors in Sarawak for the last 10 years. Eh? Last 10 years already. We had some donors last time, but now no donors for the last 10 years. So this was in 1992. But this is not the first one. Before that, we had some, some donation. So this was the first one, 1990, first one for many years. We started transplantation in Malaysia in 1975. So not many donations from brain dead people, not many. So this was the last one we had in Sarawak General Hospital. So this, this is the team, I was here, and this is Dr. John Wee. He came from, G, from GHKL. This is in KBJ Hospital. Uh, these are the nurses from GH. Uh, these are the doctors from GH, including myself. This is the doctor from GHKL. So they come with a big uh, no, uh, ice box, with all the instruments, they fly in collect the organs, and they fly back to KL. Uh, this was on 6 August 2013. 2013, this is 15. So since 15, we have no donation in Sarawak. Okay, so I think this is, the, this, this is probably the second one. This is the third one. So we have very few organ donations in Sarawak. So when we harvest the organ, we clean it. We clean it, we, make, we, we freeze it down to 4 degrees, and then we put in a plastic bag, put in a plastic bag and send it to, for, 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 for transplantation. This is the box I used when I was in GHKL. So when there's a call from me from Johor, I will drive down to Johor Bahru, harvest the organ and drive back and transplant the organ. So I've done it for Johor, I've done it for Ipoh when I was working there when I was working there. Now they tend to use uh, ambulance to go because it's quite a long drive. Lah. So we keep it at three to four degrees, not too cold, not too cold. Because if it's frozen, it cannot be used. So these are the deceased organs. Uh, in, last time we call it cadaveric. Uh. So every year we have about 10, maybe 10. Heart, one or two. This is last time. But now, now for the heart, it's even worse. I heard they have stopped the, the heart transplant program. Liver, only a few every year. Lung, basically none. Zero. Zero. So, so actually the, the, the organ transplantation program in Malaysia is very poor, like whatever I know Ibrahim say, whatever the minister say. Okay, so it's very poor. What about the transplant? Is transplant a guaranteed success? So if the mother or father give the organ to the child, is it a guaranteed success? So I studied, I studied the first 10 years, uh, I studied the first 200 cases uh, when I was in GHKL. First 200 cases, I look at all the record and see what happened. So actually, there are a lot of complications following a transplant. A lot of complications. The, the commonest complication is infection. Eh? In English, called sepsis. Ah. Sepsis. Sepsis. That means the patient got infection. Uh, that's why during the COVID, uh, COVID uh, pandemic, we stopped doing kidney transplant in Malaysia. Because, because the immune system is down when the person has a transplant. Well, how, why is it down? Because we give them medication to prevent rejection. The other big problem is of the 200 cases, 66 of them, that means like one third of them have got rejection. That means the, means the body reject the organ. So it's not harmless, it's not harmless, it's not harmless. And of course, when we do surgery, sometimes there are technical, technical problems, right? Even if you repair the car, there are technical problems. There's sometimes there's leakage, sometimes there's a blockage. So, so these are the surgical complications. But the result overall with, with intervention is very good. So, so, so one year survival is 94%. So if you donate a kidney to your, to your child, at the end of one year, 94% the kidney is still working. Five years is almost 90%. So the result is very good, but it's not without problems. It's not like you go to hospital, the mother gives the kidney, take the kidney, put into the child, the child go home happily forever. It's not like that. 
That probably only happens if it's a twin. Twin. In other words, the, the twin number one gives the twin number two. The genetic is completely the same. Uh, that can happen uh, if it's a twin. So some people, they transplant, they go, go to the jungle, stay there, don't want to come and see anybody, don't want to see doctor, don't take medication. But that is very rare, like, very rare. Okay? So that is kidney transplantation. What about the donor? If you, if you choose to donate a kidney to your, your, now we can donate to your girlfriend, your wife, or no husband, whatever. So what is the risk for the donor? We have one death. We have one death during the operation or immediately after operation in GHKL. One death. So, so we cut off the kidney and then we tie the artery. This particular woman, the, the suture came off. So she bled to death in the ward. The nurses did not pick it up in time. So after that case, all the patients go to ICU after operation. Uh, you may think that this doesn't happen, this only happens in Malaysia, but in Singapore, the same thing. Singapore, so quite, quite a few cases. They clip, they use keyhole surgery, they clip the artery, but when the patient go back to the ward, the artery fell, fell off, you know, the artery fell off. Just like you staple your paper, right? You staple it, then you bring to the class, some of the paper fall off. Long term, there are no, no significant, no significant problems. They use the word significant, doesn't mean there are no problems. So if you donate one kidney, if you have a family history of diabetes, if you have infection, then there's a risk that the donor can also get kidney failure. Okay? They can get kidney failure. So ideally, we try to avoid donation unless there's no choice. Unless, and of course, a lot of people in Sarawak have no choice. A lot of people have no choice. That's why that, that little boy, the brother gave it to the elder brother. Because otherwise, the brother will die. Because they have no choice. So we have so much kidney failure every year. Every year, we have increasing number of people going on dialysis. But the number of transplants in Malaysia are not increasing. This is 2019. 50,000 patients on dialysis. 40,000. Now it's 50,000. So we've got a lot of patients on dialysis. If you go to any dialysis center in Kuching, Sibu, Miri, Bintulu, almost all the centers are full house. Even when you have money, you cannot be dialyzed. Eh? You cannot be dialyzed. So we got a lot of kidney failure. So before I came just now, I went to, to find out because I think I should tell you a bit more about hemodialysis. Hemodialysis means they take the blood from the body, put the blood into a machine, the machine try, try to purify it as much as possible and put the blood back into the machine. So, so I went to this, went to the clinic, I mean the dialysis clinic next door, like next door to me. In, in normal hospital, the dialysis, the nephrologist and the urologist, we are in the same place. So I went there and I tried to entice him, entice him. I give him a present. Look at him, look at him very carefully. He's holding something on the right hand. If you if, if can tell me what it is, I will give you the present as well. So I give him a present. And then I said, can I take a photograph with, uh, of you? He said, okay, okay, bole, bole. So this is the patient on dialysis. Blood is taken out, go into the machine and come back. Uh, he can drink, he can eat, he can look at the YouTube, but it takes four hours, four hours of your life. So, so it's, uh, and the blood, if you stick a needle into your vein, you, you don't take much blood unless you stick it into the neck here. So what we do is that we connect, we connect the artery to the vein. Uh, it's a minor operation, uh, it's called the AVF. We connect it so that the vein becomes very big. No? So, so, so when you stick the needle there, a lot of blood will come out, uh, so that it, it, can, it, can be, it can be dialyzed. It's still four hours. Uh, so four hours on the machine is a tough life, like a tough life. My own brother-in-law was on dialysis for 30 years, my brother-in-law. That means my elder sister's husband. Initially, when she was in Miri, there was no dialysis center. So we have to buy the machine for him. He dialyzed at home. So it's, it's a lot of money, like a lot of money. That's why most people in Sarawak, I would say most of the third world countries, if you have kidney failure, you have no choice. No choice means you're going to die, like basically you're going to die. <laughs> That's what one of my sisters, the nurse, the nurse tells the patient, Nibu si, niju si la. So she got very angry. <laughs> okay. Now in children, or in people who got a poor heart, we cannot take the blood out for dialysis. So we do what's called peritoneal dialysis. We put liquid into the peritoneum, into the abdomen. Keep it there for one or two hours, and then let the liquid come out. So it's called peritoneal dialysis. And again, peritoneal dialysis is in Malaysia for a long time. This was the 10th anniversary. I just joined. This is me last time, very fat. Right? Last time I was very fat. So that was me. 
I think that's probably 1991. This is Tansri Abu Pakar Sulaiman. He is a kidney specialist. So he started, he started this program of dialysis for Malaysia. So in Malaysia, if you have a government seven connection, the son, the father, mother, whatever, you will get free dialysis in Malaysia. He started this program, Tansri uh, Abu Pakar Sulaiman. Either peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. And the government also, under the previous, minist previous, previous minister, says that the government will sponsor one-third your dialysis, one-third. But you must find the other two-thirds. So if the dialysis costs $180, the government will pay $60. But you must find another $120. So how are you going to find $120 if your whole month's salary is only $1,000, right? So it's very tough. So this is where the NGO, the church come in. Uh, Padu, uh, so the church will say, okay, or the kidney foundation will come in and say, okay, I give you $60. But you must find $60 from somewhere else, family member, whatever. The, the concept is like that. La. Singapore National Kidney Foundation also, same concept. Because if you cannot find any money at all, you cannot walk, nobody look after you, you are half blind, then it's probably not good idea to dialyze. Of course, that decision is up to God. Like, you know? Your life is up to God. You know? but, but it's probably a logical decision not to treat kidney failure if, if you're not productive or you have no, no resources at all, like, you know? at all. So this, this thing of organ donation is a responsibility for the government. For the government. So, we have very few donors in Sarawak for the last 10 years. So Sarawak General Hospital, this Sarawak General Hospital, this is the entrance. Huh? The, the, the May Bank machine is here. So as you walk into Sarawak General Hospital at the entrance, they are right at the entrance. So the office is right here. Organ Hospital Unit per Olean Organ Hospital. But they have, they have not got any organ for a long, long time already. So they gave me these leaflets huh, if you are interested in these leaflets. So this is Dr. Uma. Dr. Uma, she is the medical officer in charge of the, these nurses la, for organ donation. And uh, these are the organs that can be harvested. Uh, uh, the skin, the bones, the heart waf, heart waf kuching, I think we only harvested one, 97. I harvested from GH, heart waf. The cornea, cornea we harvesting for a long time. Uh, cornea can be harvested from the, even from the mortuary or even from the home. If somebody die at home, they can still donate the cornea. Uh, the heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys. So traditionally, usually it's the kidneys. So this is the one in all in Basa, Malaysia. If you collect an organ and put it inside a plastic bag, like somebody chop up your penis, uh, chop penis and you put it inside a plastic bag and bring it from Muka to Sibu, Sibu to Kuching, of course the thing will be dead. It's dead. So you must keep it cool, 4 degrees. And even if you keep it cool at 4 degrees, the liver and the heart will last only four hours. Ambat jam saja, four hours. So most of the heart lung must be trans, trans must be transplanted in the same locality. The kidney can last forty eight hours. Forty eight hours. So so the kidney can be harvested from Kuching and sent to KL, or even sent to Singapore, or even sent to London. I think I can say can you send to London. So in USA is one country. USA is one country, so they have an organ sharing system. Because sometimes you cannot find the correct tissue type, you know. You don't have the tissue type, but that maybe there's another person somewhere else with that tissue type. So the organ can be sent to another place. In exchange, uh, in exchange, I owe you. Uh, so, so maybe New York give you one kidney to San Francisco, maybe next year they'll give, return another kidney like that. Uh. So it's organ sharing. So organ sharing kidney is no problem. Bone usually is kept in the in the bank, but we don't have the bank in Sarawak. So they send, to, I think, to USM. So they keep in the bank, and then when somebody needs bone, they, they can use the cadaveric bone for, 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 for limb reconstruction. So all the organs can be donated. Can, can be donated. These are the organs. And when they're donated the organ, the surgeon will stitch back everything nicely, like, like, like surgery. So the, the body is not disfigured. Uh, okay, I'm coming to my almost the end of my presentation. So I went there, I went to the place, I said, 
would you like to come to this gathering? He said, no, no, you go first, see how is the response. Uh, but they're happy to come. This team of people are happy to come. Just like blood, blood, uh, uh, blood donation, uh, they're happy to come to your church meeting, whatever, to see whether anybody pledged the organs or not. But pledging an organ is only one part of the story. When the person dies, he's dead, right? He cannot give consent. And he also, he cannot give consent before he dies, right? Because he don't know when he's going to die. Right? Suddenly, accident or shock or whatever, you know? So, we still need consent from the family, the next of kin. And very often, the next of kin is too unhappy, too sad, they cannot give consent. So, what do the Singaporeans do? Singapore have a law. When you die, your body belongs to the government. That's called the opt-out law. Unless when you are alive, you sign, I don't want to donate my organs. That's called the opt-out law. They have, a, they have a directory. They look at the directory. Oh, this one, Mr. Wong Ting Chung. Okay, last time he said he don't want to donate. Okay, don't touch his body. Cannot touch. Okay, so, so it's called opt-out law. Uh, so in Singapore, if you are, must be a Singaporean. Uh, Singaporean, Malaysian accident, never mind. So if you are Singaporean, you have an accident in Singapore, your body belongs to the government. Okay, so the government can harvest your organs. But usually they talk to the next of kin. Uh. But because the law is so strong, most of the next of kin will not object. In Malaysia, even if you sign a donor card, quite often the family will object. Usually Malaysians, we are like, we are family again. So, so sometimes there are 10 of us in the family. So quite often the grandmother says, no, 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 beside, beside, beside. So if, if somebody says like that, of course, eventually people will not agree again. Uh, unless there's some very strong member in the family, okay, he already said he wants to donate, so let him donate. Uh, so quite often we have this problem. Nah. The, the fa family often indecisive to donate, even though the, fa the patient may have carried a donor card. How to become a donor in Malaysia? Last time we, ca we carry a card, now no more card. So now you want to donate, you just go to the website. Uh, you want to talk to somebody, you can call the, call the GH. But unfortunately, they don't want to give me their handphone number, so they give me this number. Uh, or you can email to them. And as like all government departments, they only work during office hours. Uh, but you can, you can contact this handphone number if you like, if you're interested like, in any of these things I've discussed today. La, discussed today. Uh, so this is my last slide. Uh, I want to end by saying that another important function is nutrition. What you eat is very important for everything in life, especially the kidneys. So the kidney is important for Produce, re removing waste products. And where do the waste products come from? They come from protein. So a, 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 a nutrition good for the kidney is less protein, especially processed protein, you know, uh, and less potassium. Potassium is found like things like banana, uh, 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 coconut, coconut water, especially if your kidney function is not so good. Uh, Phosphate, phos phosphorus, phosphorus, especially things like Milo. Huh? Lom, you take a lot of Milo. My partner in Norma is Dr. William Chow. Every day he'll be shouting at patients, you, jangan, you don't take Milo. Milo is no good for you. Okay, so Milo. And then uh, salt, uh, salt. I think Sarawakians take too much salt. They just put salt in everything. Uh, salt, 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 salty. So salt is, cost, is a strain for the, for, the, for the thing. And water intake. You must drink enough water, but not too much water. Okay, enough water means about 1.5 to 2 liters, not 10 liters, unless you play golf. La. I play golf, then you drink more. You must produce, a normal human being must produce 1.5 to 2 liters of urine a day. 1.5, about 1.5 liters of urine. Don't, don't drink too much, don't drink too little. But most people tend to drink too little, la, too little. So, so where there's a will, there's a way. So this little boy, kidney failure. The mother looked after Peritoneal dialysis. After that, the mother donated the kidney. So I did the transplant for, for him uh, when I was in GHK. So, so the treatment is available, but it's not so easy. It's not so easy. Uh, it, it's, it takes a lot of time and effort. Lah. It takes a lot of time and effort. Hmm. What else I want to say? I think that's about all for my lecture, but I will be happy to discuss with you, either in English or Mandarin or Fuchao or Hokkien or whatever. Say any man. Any questions? This for today, but you, if you want to ask me other questions, also fine. Um,
because I used to lecture at the kidney foundation, uh, kidney foundation. So, so other topics, other topics of my speciality, lah, uh, other, other bladder, the prostate, uh, prostate, prostate cancer is very common, and then about uh, pr uh, having a child and fertility and sex uh, and passing it at night. I'm not so good in this part, lah. Uh, not the the church part. I'm not so good, lah. Okay. My church is St. Thomas Church. I go to St. Thomas Church. We, we, we run a free clinic there last time. Now we stopped already. No questions? Please ask me a question. Otherwise, I feel very disappointed. <laughs> The answer is no. Uh, because even four hours is not good enough. Even four hours is not good enough. Unless, unless they have uh, still fairly good function. But if you have fairly good function, then they, they, they don't need to go on dialysis. Eh? They don't need to go on dialysis. I know what you mean. A lot of people have that idea. Why don't I dialyze once a week or twice a week or something like that? You know? uh, the answer is no. It, it, it doesn't work that way. So even if you're traveling, you're going to holiday in Singapore, in China, you can go to the local center for dialysis. Nah. You can go to the local center for dialysis. So where's my dialysis? Uh, so, so this is a, on the machine, three times a week. Uh, the one in charge is the nephrologist. I'm a urologist. That means I'm a surgeon. I operate. So dialysis is under Dr. William Chow. I, I took a picture from his room just now. William Chow. So they are the kidney specialists like Dr. Simon Wong, William Chow. So, so uh, usually we don't have patients who are dialyzed once a week. We only have one patient who is dialyzed once a week and that's because she, she is a psychiatric patient. Uh, so she doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't want to be dialyzed. So very difficult to force her, right? Um, but there are many ideas la, of different machines, la, this and that, la, but so far all that is under research. La. All of them require dialysis three, time, three times a week, four hours. Almost all of them. To, to, be, to be worth the while. La. Just alang-alang, la, you dialyze once a week. You, know? you, don't kill, you, don't, you don't remove all the waste products. Even then also the machine is quite important. The type of machine you do is also quite important. Can ask me, just ask me any question. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Okay, that, that slide I took out because I don't, to, I don't become a nephrologist. So usually they start with bubbles in the urine, leg swollen, extra fluid because the body not produced. The face swollen. Okay? So, so the, the body cannot remove the water. The kidney cannot remove the water. So the treatment is. Try not to drink too much, starting. After that, of course, in the end, dialysis. Lah. Then, the waste products, not, not removed. So the face becomes yellow, become dark, then become very itchy, itchiness. And then they feel like vomiting, because all the waste products, they vomit, they cannot eat. So these are the, all the indications of kidney failure, and then they will require dialysis. But the actual decision to dialyze is the nephrologist, is this guy, because once you start dialysis, it's a lot of money. It's at least $200 per session. 200 times 3 times 4. So it's a lot of money. And if you go to the normal medical center, 90% of them are the government dependents. So it's a big decision for the doctor to make because it's, it's a lot of money for many years. So, so, so to, to decide on dialysis is the nephrologist's job. They have to certify, sign, 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 sign. And not only they have to go to Gamma Hospital for Dr. Claire Tan to sign as well. Because it's a lot of money. So, so they're very clear indications. Now. The other thing is, the heart, if the waste products, then the heart will stop. The heart will uh, irregular heartbeat. Then it becomes emergency. La. It becomes emergency. You have to go to emergency and then they put the line in their eyes. Mm. So the body is broken. The body is broken. The body is broken. The body is broken. The body is because a lot of toxins, 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 a lot of toxins.
hundred hundred per million 啊，所以杀了每年有两百五十个人有身坏掉 ，two hundred fifty per year in Sarawak. And I think most of these people, they just die. Most of them will just die. Most of them, because it's so expensive, right? It's so expensive to dialyze. Most people cannot. Most people cannot afford the dialysis. Mr. Yong, thank you. Thank you. Okay. You mean insurance, eh? Insurance, it depends on the type of insurance you buy, how much you pay. Usually it's one lump sum, they say, okay, dialysis for two years or three years. A lot, lot of insurance don't cover long-term dialysis. I know because I've been working for 40 years, so insurance Usually, for usually they give like critical illness. They give you two hundred thousand finish. You know, like you got cancer, they give you three hundred thousand finish. So usually, insurance not enough for lifelong dialysis. Not enough for lifelong dialysis. And then the 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 social security, social security EPF, you can withdraw money for the dialysis. Soxo will dialyze you. Soxo will pay hundred and twenty dollars. Not enough. Soxo pay hundred and twenty dollars. You dialyze until you are sixty five. I think. There's, there's a the Sokso law, la, there's a law there. But you must have contributed for at least nine months. So if any of you is working, uh, all your employees, please please report, please register with Sokso. You must register with Sokso. Because the benefit is for dialysis. $120 until you're 65. Even though you already got kidney failure. You already got kidney failure, you can still register. After nine months, you can make use of the benefit. So Sokso is very useful. So make sure that all your employees or yourself, make sure you have a SOXO number. I'm 68, so no point with it. <laughs> Too late already. <laughs> and then my wife is a teacher. My wife is a pensioner, so I can use the, the government connection if I need dialysis. Suppose you take a I say, you pay the one Okay, okay, so the the issue is what? You have not had the disease yet? Will the body return to normal? No, there is no such thing. No such medicine. Ah, many, many, many patients say, "Oh, I see Doctor Wong, I see Doctor Lee, Doctor Lai, I have the disease. I don't need the medicine." No, there is no such thing. But the medicine is how? The medicine is to prevent, but not to cure. Okay, so the issue is what? You have not had the disease yet? No, there is no such thing. 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 第二是血压高，血压 must control the blood pressure, must control the blood pressure。啊，大多生病的人都有血压高，大多生病有血压高，所以你 you must control the blood pressure。说马来西亚血压高哈、啊、，the control is very bad, very very bad in Malaysia。血压低 good。我爸爸血压低，我也是血压低。我爸爸爸九十多岁了，<笑>没有你血压低，真是你马上 no symptom， 没有没有什么现象的，不要买烟啦，你看呢啊，有马上啊血压低，啊生病生病大多是血压高，如果你有生病 confirm 有生病，你血压低就不好了。Uh, let me see where is the this one uh, causes of kidney failure. I thought it's in the beginning just now. Ah, check a check a check a slide. This slide, yeah. So, so we Malaysia, just the type of thing, just the type of thing. This problem. I every day see patients with type of thing. Their mother with type of thing is sick. 我叫他，你不可以吃糖啊，不可以吃太多，那个、那个、那个高龄高龄的，大多是马来人的，他不相信。过了十年，他也是谁呀？他也是牺牲。所以 ，sugar very important。我我们
我们要改变我们脑下，不要说我我我没有糖尿病，不可以讲我没有糖尿病，明明是糖尿病，二十多休克就就是糖就是讲糖尿病了，但这个是糖尿病可以改善的，不是说你 forever 吃药的，糖尿病 exercise， 运动，吃的东西小心，不说不可以吃东西，改变吃东西，吃鸡蛋啦、啊、，fish 啦、啊，牛奶啦、啊，是吧？不要吃太多面菜，那个那个那个 carbohydrate 的 c a r b o 说、so, 这个最重要，有时候有些没有办法就吃药了，就是吃药没办法。验什么？什么？糖尿病？生病的验血 A 吗？啊，带啊 ，maybe 二十块 ，twenty dollars only。The renal profile。啊，就验血就知道了。Creatinine and G E G F R。啊，那个是你如果小便包包太久，就会有生病了。啊，有泡泡有 protein 呢，看看为什么有泡泡？有时候有泡泡没有 protein 的，有没有蛋白质的？如果你小便很多蛋白质哈，后来就会有生，所以就会生病坏掉了。验血验尿，那不要一直问。还有一个这个哈，你刚才问我要是什么药？有些人呢，肾湿头啊，肾结石啊，不要医，或者是没有钱医啊。Sarawakian, a lot of Sarawakian got kidney failure because of this. 两边生四头，没有钱，去政府等很久，政府医生对你没有兴趣，他要做别的东西，啊，所以很多人 ，is very is a pity, right? Four percent. 在美美国 only point one percent, but in Malaysia, 很多病人为了为了生四头生生结石啊，会生坏掉。Blockage, 那个是。可以可以可以可以可以避免的。Just remove the stone, no problem already. Mr. Yong, come. One more, a few more questions. Okay, I've got time. Oh, the the urine test, ah? Yeah, we get some negative, 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 negative. Lah. Look at your glucose, protein, you know, ah, nitrate, blood. Ah, 就有问题了咯。So check the urine. Very cheap, only six dollars only. Six dollars urine test. Go to Pet Lab. Urine test six dollars. Make sure no sugar, no protein, no blood, no leukocyte. Okay, ready. Every six months, 不用花几百块，不用做那个什么 tumor marker 啦，什么一大堆不用，就是做 urine test, kidney function, blood glucose, and cholesterol 啦 ，col and cholesterol. 我们没有尝试过，但他们他们做了在哥伦比亚和伦敦。他们做了，已经做了。他们做了。最靠近的动物，对，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，不是，Animals got their viruses. Animals got viruses, so those viruses can kill the human being. Just like if we if we are going to say there's a guy in Kapit, he wants to donate the organ, the brain dead already. We want to collect the organ from from Kapit and bring to GHK for transplant. We have to screen the donor for HIV, for dengue, for VDRL, for hepatitis B, hepatitis C. So many viruses we have to screen. And even then also, we cannot guarantee, guarantee the recipient that there's no viruses inside. So the, most, the biggest problem is the virus. Uh, the, vi the viruses found in the animals, which don't kill the animal but kill the human being. Just this problem. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, fail. That's why even the the first transplant after thirty years they fail. They fail for a number of reasons. One reason is rejection. 
the body reject 吗？这个不是我的吗？这个是我弟弟的吗 ？They reject. And then the other thing is that we have to give all the recipients toxic medication to suppress the suppress the body system. So they are taking all these chemicals for thirty years. So after a while, they also got cancer. They got lymphoma, leukemia, you know, prostate cancer, liver cancer. So the recipient eventually they die off from rejection, from infection, from cancer. Infection. Sometimes they are careless. That boy, that that man was bitten by his cat. His cat bite him. Then he leave it alone. After five days, he went to Kuching GH. He's too sick already. Blood pressure dropped already. That's why he died. Died from the cat bite. Of course, many of them die from cancer, like breast cancer, cervical cancer. So, so that's why try not to have kidney failure, lah. Transplant also problem. Dialysis also problem. And the biggest corporate in Malaysia is the diabetes, lah. Yeah, David Ling. Is there any limit for donation of kidney? Like, for example, any healthy one can donate to anybody. Is it like that? All must be related. Okay. Anybody can donate. Anybody can donate. And anybody can receive. The problem is how to match it. So, so if I want to give to my girlfriend, ah, then they, then they have to go to a committee lah. Go to a committee in the Ministry of Health. Why this this person your girlfriend? You give her you give her money, ah, cannot. So girlfriend, they have to establish. If it is a legally married wife for X number of years, then okay. So you can you can donate to a proven relative. So in Malaysia, a lot of the relatives come from China, you know. They come from China. Link one is linked, the other person also linked. But after you check, check, actually they're not linked. Like they're simply fake the document. So that this commercialization, lah, commercialization. So that is the legal aspect of it. So in Malaysia, some of the doctors, even in Singapore, some doctors go to prison, go to jail, lah, because they participate in this. They call the organ organ trade, lah, trade of organs, lah. It's supposed supposed to be illegal, lah. Then the other question is whether the organ is good enough or not. So if say if I want to give to my wife, I have kidney failure. My kidney function is borderline, borderline, borderline. So if I give her one kidney, I will left with half. So I may not live so long. So the doctor will say I cannot take your organ. Not fair. Not fair for you. And then the recipient doctor will say, Hey, this kidney like that, alang alang one. Maybe she use only for a few years. So also not fair. So first we assess the kidney function. Of course, the most important is I mentioned earlier about the infection. Lah. So if you got the infection, your kidney function is no good, or you got cancer. Say if I got lung cancer, I want to donate my kidney. Cannot because in your kidney got blood. The blood would have cancer cells. So if I donate to give to the person, the person may have lung cancer. Unless your cancer is considered cured, lah. like you got skin cancer, no, you chop out the finger already. After two years, nothing happened. Can so if your cancer is already cured for a few years, then you can donate. The most problematic one in Malaysia is diabetes. If you're diabetic, if you have a strong family history of diabetes, you know, you know, just father mother diabetic, the chance of your diabetes is almost hundred percent. So if father mother diabetic, you cannot donate. If you are diabetic, you cannot donate. But hypertension can, dyslipidemia can. Heart is another problem. We have got a lot of heart disease in Malaysia, so so if you got severe heart disease, you cannot donate because you may die during the operation. So so we don't want to kill the patient by subjecting them to an operation unless it's a very minor thing, lah, minor thing. Same with recipient. If recipient is very high risk, they should not receive the organ. They better go on CAPD, peritoneal dialysis. Very very mild, ma. Put the tube in, just put in fluid. So it's a very sad story, lah. Not a good story. That's why I. That's why I didn't want to be a nephrologist. All the patient die in the end. Why is it real? I mean, why is it real? It's 
Okay, so it's illegal. First of all, it's illegal. It's illegal. In other words, the doctor, the nurses can be put in jail. Uh, and last time, China did not enforce it. But pre-Olympic pre game, China said, we enforce it. So now if any Chinese doctor is caught doing this, he'll go to jail or he may be even be executed. Malaysia, Singapore is always illegal, never legal before. I think the only country may be a little bit legal may be Iran. Maybe Iran you can buy. Iran. So most countries illegal. So when it's illegal, it becomes very problematic. So patients who go to Cambodia, for example, because Cambodia, somehow, I don't know, the, the policeman, I don't know what happened. So the, they will bring the donor from somewhere, the patient from Malaysia, the surgeon from China, go to transplant in Cambodia. But because it's still illegal, the moment they transplant, they say, Nihuicha, you go home. So they land up in Kuching. In, in Cambodia, there's some urine coming out. But when they come back to Kuching, no urine come out. Because there are so many complications, ba. There are so many complications. So the money go, gone already. And the worst thing is that the money, most of the money didn't go to the patient, the, the, one, the recipient. They get something like maybe 10,000 ringgit only, you know? The amount of money that the recipient get. So it's very sad. La. So generally speaking, it's not encouraged. The other problem about Malaysia is like that. For a long time, Malaysian government said, you go to buy a kidney, Malaysia will not pay for your treatment. Because the medicine is very expensive. The medicine is more expensive than dialysis. La all the medication for transplant. More expensive than dialysis. But of course, the patient is happy, la, no need to lie down four hours, three times a week. La. They can go to nightclub, they can have girlfriend, they go here, go there, you know. No need to lie down at the machine for four hours. So a lot of the rich people, they go to buy a kidney. La. But it's generally speaking, not recommended. La. Not recommended. But sometimes you got no choice. You have no choice. Some of the patients got no choice. They, they got no donor. Uh, they don't feel like lying down four hours, three times a week. The abdomen is full of appendectomy over, over here. They cannot go for peritoneal dialysis. So they just find the money and somehow they make some arrangement at the table to, to have a transplant. But very few nowadays, maybe two or three a year only. Last time, plenty. You saw the clear tans, clear tans like plenty last time. For long, the, they go to China to buy a kidney. Now it has stopped, right? no more, no more. There. When I was in GHK, they always go to Bombay. They go to India to buy last time. Last time they buy it from India. See, this is from Dr. Clayton, GHGH. So we got over, so-called overseas transplant. Nah? So many. Yeah. Even now, we still got probably about 100 of them. Lah, but transplanted last time, lah, not new ones. Patients who go to Bombay, I, I did a study last time, and one third of them come back with HIV. They transplant in, in Bombay. That's 1991, 92, like that. Those few years, lah, I, I survey all of them. One third of them come back HIV positive. What you say, right? Uh, that time, uh, now okay, uh, now HIV can be treated. Uh, now it can be treated. So, so buying a kidney is no good. The best is, of course, to develop our, our local program. Uh, that's the best. But it's not moving. Uh, not moving. Not moving. Uh, not moving. So I'm quite happy to come and talk to you about transplant. Uh. So hopefully, you know. But if you, if, you have got, if you have got a cancer, if you have got diabetes, no point. Because you, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot uh, be a donor. Once they check your background, they won't accept your kidney. Already. Or you've got kidney, kidney impairment. Look on the sun, you can't go. You can't go. You can't go. Okay. Thank you. Time's up. Bye bye. Thank you so much.谢谢,谢谢,多多雷哈,所以今晚也很interesting,学到很多新的东西,很多新的知识,然后Q&A学学也是让我们又重新学到更多哈,那么啊,作为结束,那么今天啊,我想邀请啊,中义弟兄啊
kidney 我们有多一层的认识，甚至对这个 kidney 的这个移植我们有多一个多一层的认识。谢谢天父今天的祝福，也求神继续带领弟兄姐妹。好，我们特别也神的祝福啊啊，长毛医生，他在接下来的日子继续在这个医疗上继续的为人民为。这个为人民来服务，我们谢谢我们求神继续祝福他，也祝福弟兄姐妹在回家的早中就是保守，让我们回家都平安，愿神看顾。我们愿意为着今天，我们再一次向天父来感恩，谢谢天父赐给我们，也赐给我们这段时间祷告，奉主耶稣基督名祈求，阿门。